Friends, welcome to this recorded service from the North Cabellan United Church. As we are all aware, the recent extensive increase in the presence of the COVID virus require us to not gather in person to worship at this time. We anticipate recording these weekly services for the remainder of the month and possibly beyond as a way for all of us to continue safely to worship. So it is that a few of us have gathered together to create the service for January 16th, the second Sunday after the Epiphany. Participating in the service today is Joanne, our musician, Sharon, our reader and candlelighter, Peter and Peggy assisting in leading the responses, Wilma, our videographer, Heinz, our sound technician, and I am Reverend Don Johnson, minister of the congregation. As we begin, we acknowledge that we meet in Treaty One land, the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, Cree, and Dakota peoples, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We are thankful for these first inhabitants, and we commit to working together towards justice, truth, and reconciliation. We turn now to the lighting of the Christ candle. In Christian teaching and tradition, each Sunday is believed to be a little Easter, a weekly celebration of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we light this candle, affirming that Christ is indeed the light of the world, our hope and our salvation. There is no other in whom we place our trust. Let us worship God. How precious is the steadfast love of God. All people may take refuge in the shadow of God's embrace. Christ is the fountain of life. In Christ we behold the light of God. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship. from the Hebrew scripture, Isaiah chapter 62. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, my delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. 
And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The responsive reading is from Psalm 36. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your, your righteousness is like the mighty mountains. Your, your judgments are like the great deep. You save humans and animals alike, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. O oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you, and your salvation to the upright of heart. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. The Gospel this day is written in the second chapter of the Gospel according to John. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the rim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the wine knew, well, drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. A month ago, we were pleased to host a wedding ceremony and the reception that followed here at North Kildonan United Church. Although our sanctuary was decorated for Christmas with garlands and poinsettias and two Christmas trees, the happy couple were able to add their personal touches, thus making our church home even more beautiful and welcoming. And if we were to overlook the presence of masks, it was easy to believe that we were in normal pre-pandemic days, days without fear of contagion and risk, days of joy and gladness, days we eagerly look forward to enjoying once more. It was a happy occasion, and we were very fortunate to have scheduled the event before the recent variant turned everything upside down. In these days of limitations and restrictions and cancellations, it was so very good to be able to participate in a life-giving, life-affirming, delightful celebration. To be able to play our part in adding to this young couple's joy and hope for the future. It was a tangible reminder that in time we will once again be free to plan celebrations and gatherings without fear or worry. A reminder that what was once common and available will once again be possible for us. And so we need that reminder in days like this. So we hope for the very best 
for this couple starting out their married life together. And we are glad that they chose our church home to be the place to celebrate their new beginning. In John's Gospel, the first sign or miracle that Jesus performed, <clears throat> the first public display of his power and identity, was at a wedding in Cana in Galilee. We are told that both Jesus and his mother were at the event, and Jesus' disciples were invited as well. It's interesting to note that John's Gospel doesn't call her Mary, just the mother of Jesus. But it's okay for us to call her Mary. So the wedding is in full celebration, perhaps with more guests present than originally planned for. And no doubt, this was a typical Jewish wedding for those days. A celebration that didn't end after a few hours, but went on for days, possibly a week. To host such an event would be a costly affair, but to run out of wine would be terribly embarrassing, probably bringing this celebration to an abrupt conclusion. Running out of wine is exactly what happened. Mary must have been close to the family of the married couple because she was aware of the wine shortage and felt the need to do something about it. Mary tells Jesus and, and he says to his mother in, in language that seems a bit harsh, woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. I have a nephew who sometimes, in a bid to be funny, will call his mother woman. It is funny, but also a bit unsettling when he does it, but that's just an aside. At first glance, it seems like Jesus is refusing to help. But Mary instructs the servants to do whatever Jesus asks them to do, obviously hopeful that somehow Jesus might rescue the situation. So Jesus tells the servants to fill six water jars with water. Think of the amount of water used. Six jars, each holding between 20 or 30 gallons of water. This amounts to 120 to 180 gallons not a mere four liter box of wine, but gallons upon gallons. The chief steward tastes the liquid now transformed into wine and talks with the groom. He says, everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. A total reversal of the common custom of the day. Of course, the incredible amount and the high quality of the wine speak of the, extra, of the extravagant abundance of God, a sign of God's fulfillment of God's promise in Jesus Christ. In the Feasting on the Word commentary for this Sunday, Robert Brutley writes, James McBride Dabbs, an author and Presbyterian elder, remembers religion as the opposite of life in rural South Carolina. He quotes, Religion was a day and a place. Religion was Sunday and the church. Almost everything else was a life. Religion was a curious, quiet, and inconsequential moment in the vital existence of a country boy. It came around every week but it didn't seem to have much to do with the rest of life, that is, with life. The sign at Cana tells us that Jesus served a God who puts joy into life, who thinks it is worth a miracle to keep the party going as we celebrate people. He continues, God does not want our religion to be too holy to be happy in. Throughout his life and his ministry, Jesus of Nazareth celebrated people, people getting married, people being healed of disease and deformity, 
people enjoying meals together. He carried a spirit of celebration with him wherever he went as he proclaimed a God of mercy and peace and joy. This joyous feast at Cana is still a sign to the church that we are to rejoice in the people of God and to toast the world with the amazing good news of grace. Jesus was, of course, steeped in Jewish teachings and practices. It is probably helpful for us to be aware of Jewish marriage customs as we hear of this wedding that Jesus and his mother Mary attended. So let me conclude this sermon as I share with you the perspective and wisdom of Rabbi Jonathan Sachs on the subject of Jewish weddings. He wrote in 2003 in an article entitled, Marriage is a Metaphor for Our Relationship with God. He wrote the following. In a few weeks time, we will be celebrating our daughter's wedding. It is hard to convey the depth of emotion I feel at a Jewish wedding. It is more than a ceremony sanctifying the commitment of bride and groom, because individuals are more than individuals. We are who we are because of our parents and the drama of which they and we are a part. A wedding in Judaism is a new chapter in the story of the Jewish people. The seven blessings said over the bride and groom go back some 2,000 years. In them, we refer to the first couple, Adam and Eve, married by God himself with the sky as their bridal canopy. We recall a phrase taken from Isaiah in the book of Psalms about a barren woman who, against expectation, has the joy of having children. That, for us, is the Jewish people as a whole, who have so often suffered and wondered whether they would survive, but now see in this couple hope for the future. We quote, we quote the glorious prophecy of Jeremiah, who, seeing Jerusalem desolate and destroyed, prophesied that in the city there would be heard once more the sounds of joy and gladness and the voices of bride and groom. It is as if all the previous generations of Jews scattered through space and time were present to give their blessings to the couple and to witness the miracle of the West's most ancient faith become young again in the love of two people for one another. Jewish weddings are usually exuberant, noisy, joyous, energetic, and over-the-top. Ancient customs that had all but disappeared one or two generations ago are making a comeback. Many brides now adopt the mystical ceremony of circling the groom seven times. Marriage contracts have become highly decorative as they used to be in the Middle Ages. The marriage contract dates back to the pre-Christian era and is one of the first statements of women's rights in history. At a Jewish wedding, you see the true nature of Jewish spirituality. Too serious to be wholly serious, too conscious of God's blessings to do anything other than rejoice. Judaism is God's invitation to celebrate life. How devastating it is that marriage seems to have lost its power in society as a whole. A marriage ceremony is more than a formality and a piece of paper. The prophets saw marriage as the single most compelling metaphor for the relationship between God and us because it involves commitment, a mutual pledge of openness and trust, a promise that neither will walk away in difficult times. 
from that covenant of loyalty and love, new life comes into the world. Marriage is not just living together, a temporary partnership for mutually beneficial ends. Heaven help us if that is all we see in it. It is the point at which the I of self meets the vow of another, transforming us into something larger, more spacious, more generous and tender than we could ever have been on our own. In marriage at its best, you see humanity at its best. And in a loving home, you can almost touch the divine presence. Jeremiah once said, I remember the devotion of your youth, how as a bride you loved me and followed me through the desert, through a land not sown. To take someone else's hand and begin a journey together into the undiscovered country called the future. That is marriage, love sanctified by the mutual gift of trust. Amen. this day with this prayer from the woman's prayer companion. Let us pray. O oh God, your son Jesus began his ministry at a wedding celebration. May the joy that is experienced as two people begin a life together continue to grow and deepen through all that life has to offer along the way. May Jesus continue to transform the water of their every day to the wine of new vision, so that what seems ordinary becomes transformed by love. May couples grow old together, knowing the best wine is saved till last, and that Jesus is the abiding guest and their companion on the way. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, in your mercy, Amen. Loving God, in every gathering of Christian believers, you bring together a people of gifts, strengths, and needs to manifest the universal body of Christ. We pray for your church throughout the world, 
that every congregation may live as sisters and brothers in harmony, showing forth the light of Christ to the world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. in every age you raise up servant leaders for your people. We pray for all who teach and lead and for all who serve in the name of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. for the sake of the common good of all people, you create human societies to be places of refuge and human flourishing. We pray for those entrusted with leadership within our city, province, and nation. And in this, her jubilee year, we pray for Elizabeth, our Queen. May they receive wisdom to exercise government with true justice grounded in mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your Son, Jesus, performed the first of his signs of glory at a wedding in Cana. We pray for all who were joined as family, for those united within the bonds of matrimony, and for all who make covenant to live together for mutual support and love, for parents and children, for the aged and the young. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all in need, for those who are fearful and anxious, for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. And we extend our best wishes for renewed strength and health, for Helen, for Joan and her grandson Aaron, and for all whom we name in the silence of our hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy, in your gracious God, you are the giver of all good things. Receive our prayers that we offer for ourselves and for our world. In all things, grant us the courage to exercise your gifts for the good of our world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us when we pray to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. On our heads and our homes, the blessing of God. On our coming and going, the peace of God. In our life and believing, the love of God. At our end and new beginning, the arms of God to welcome us and bring us home. Amen.